Um, this is ENGR 5050 and uh, humanitarian engineering. Um, I'm Professor Kevin Passano. It's not Passino, even though it looks like it, and I might out act Italian, which I think is actually pretty cool, but uh, I'm not Italian. Um, and uh, the website for the course, the bottom of the first slide, what we're going we're gonna to do a number of things um, today. I, I, I sort of view this as a time to sort of get to know each other and let you know what's, you know, sort of other people in the audience, because I know you don't all know each other either. Um, so the first thing is about this class, which I really feel is fantastic, is it's diversity. And it's diversity in um, many ways. So for instance, how many people here are, were born and raised in the United States? Raise your hand, please. Okay, so that's like uh, 80%. Okay, the rest of you are much more interesting for me. How about that? Born and raised in? And where in India? That's the western part of India. Western part of India. Not close to Bombay, Mumbai. No. Okay. Uh, other non US people? not from the US. So we have several people from Africa. No Latinos? <laughs> the teaching assistant is a Latina. Hi, Kisa. Um, and uh, she'll be um, joining us and being involved um, in the class. Uh, so we have England, several countries in Africa, others? OK, now, this is going to sound funny, but um, women, raise your hand, please. Uh, by my count, that's half. Now, for me, last year, when I taught this course, it was the first time I ever taught a course that halfway was in engineering. Okay? And it's, it's sort of interesting. This is, in fact, in the whole humanitarian engineering program at Ohio State, this is consistent. Half women um, go on the trips um, abroad doing projects, et cetera. It, it's consistently half women. You say, what's so interesting about that? The half women in the world, half men, roughly. What's interesting about it is there's 20%, or actually 19%, women in the College of Engineering. That means this is an overrepresentation of women, okay? And you can all figure out why. It's not for me to comment, but I have some ideas I've been told by women in the past, but there's a lot of variance, too, on the reasons for that, okay? Um, now, level. We have a couple of sophomores, um, juniors, a lot of seniors, and about how many great graduate students? Raise your hand. Okay, so we got a, a good number of graduate students too. Um, Who majors? I mean, I, I <clears throat> we have mechanical, electrical, quite a few civils, uh, environmental, uh, chemical. I mean, probably not mention them all. So there's a huge diversity in, in majors and, and therefore interest. Um, huge diversity in, in level. Uh, we had, uh, I believe, two or three architects sign up. Are there any of those people here? Yes, over here. <coughs> okay, so um, architecture. Uh, we have uh, this kind of diversity, I feel, I'm really happy about, to be honest with you, because the, you have to understand this field um, is an emerging field in engineering. It's developing. And one of the things is very clear is it needs a lot of input from a lot of people from a, a lot of different perspectives on how to develop it. And so, you know, what I hope to get out of this class is your inputs um, to learn how to do this better. Um, I'm improving things a lot since last year, but I'm probably going to improve them more next year. So. Uh, I really will welcome your inputs. Okay, next question. I don't, uh, 
want to hear about visits to you know Europe and so forth. Where have you visited or done projects in in the developing world or in the U.S. with the homeless or the poor? Or the poor? Anybody? Yes. Uh, I went to Zambia. Zambia. What'd you do? Um, I was speaking in Ping Pong. Really? Was it with a particular group or? Um, yeah, it was called uh, African Impact Charity. Yeah. In Africa, a bunch of different populations. Yeah, cool. Good. Anybody else? Yes. I went to Nicaragua. Nicaragua, where? It was um, Cone Island and then uh, Hikaleo is like the western side. North side. Yeah. The kind of by uh, Green Bay. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, anybody else? Yes. Kenya, Kenya, Kenya and Tanzania. What were you doing there? Um, I was doing a grant to educate on climate in Nigeria. Oh. Did you enjoy your time there? Yes. Ah, fantastic. I've not been to Africa. And I'd love to go to Africa. But it, I'll be, it's a, I'll be going in about a year or so. And I'm just, you know, I love these countries. Anybody else? Yes. Talking about education in this class, which is great. Anybody else? All right. Um, so, why did you take this class? Did you hear that it was easy? Or was it stressful? Prove things, but um, you know, really, some of the answers to this should be, for instance, um, I'm, I want to get ready to go on a trip. You know, there's, I think there's eight trips this year run by the College of Engineering. There's uh, three to Honduras, Guatemala, Colombia, Haiti, Dominican Republic, two to Ghana. Nine. That's nine. Hi. Come on in. Um, so, so uh, preparing to get on, this will help you prepare to go on a trip without a question. Okay. Um, this is a core course for the minor in humanitarian engineering. Um, if you want to learn about that, um, just look at the website for the class. Um, there's links um, um, to that. I know it counts. It, is this counting for everyone as a tackalek? That's what I mean. Most departments are taking it as a tackle lock at this point. Um, is there any departments that are not? I might help you work on that. No. Okay. Um, so I think that's a, you know a fine reason to be taking something like this. This class is is going to be a little unusual. Okay. Um, and uh, so and I but I hope it's an unusual thing that you um, enjoy. Um, so I gave a talk, I think Aaron was at it, um, to the Humanitarian Engineering Scholars this past fall. And I, at the start, I was, the title of the talk was, do I really want to be a humanitarian engineer? Question. And uh, so they started the talk by saying, okay, what are your motivations to be a humanitarian engineer? And they all responded on sheets of paper, gave their reasons. Aaron was nice enough to run off and type them all in. I took the text file, dumped it in Wordle, and that's what it comes up with. Okay, which is, for me, it was rather interesting what people are saying. So the size of a word is proportional to the number of occurrences of the word in the text file from the answers from the students. So the way I interpret that, I want to help other people in the world. And I think that's really a good summary of what this class is, is trying to do in the context of engineering. Okay? Um, so what is this definition of this word, this term, humanitarian engineering? 
So technology is usually defined simply as a tool that extends human capability. So a hammer is a, is a tool, it's a technology. A bridge is a tool because it helps you get over the river. Um, and so on and so forth. A, a computer's a tool because it helps you blah, blah, blah. So that's what a technology is. Engineers, what do we do? Well, we invent technologies. We create technologies, okay? Uh, humanitarian, um, the definition of that, if you look it up, essentially says to try to um, help so with someone's human welfare, okay? Um, whatever that means. It's a very broad term. It does not mean just go help out with the hurricane damage. It means much more than that, okay? Um, and then I want to define um, human welfare, uh, which some people don't like that term. Um, it's not, I want to define it with social justice, and we'll define that in quite a bit of detail. Social justice mi basically means um, fairness amongst groups of humans. That's really what social justice means. And uh, so what is humanitarian engineering? Well, it's, it's the shortest definition I could come up with was creating technologies that help people. Now, if you just look at the subtitle, it doesn't make sense because every technology helps people. This thing helps me call my wife, okay? I mean, but in the, this is meant to be connected to the first part of the title, and that is, is you're helping people that need it, okay? Um, so that's, that's the way I define it, and that's the, the title of um, the textbook. Um, so, this is a nutty slide. I, I don't know how you people find this. I'd like to get your input these days, but usually, uh, like back when I started um, going to school in it for engineering in 1979, uh, I'd say, I'm going, to, I'm going to be an engineer. And people would say, oh, well, you know, are you going to wear that funny little blue striped hat that the train engineer wears, you know, that hat right there? and end up like this. And, you know, ha, 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 funny, you know, I, like I haven't heard that before. And then if you, if you go to Google and you type in engineer and look at images, you come up with all these people wearing hard hats. I mean, it's absurd, okay? Uh, a bunch of people wearing hard hats in different situations. That's what we're thought of as engineers. What? How many people, how many people wore a hard hat to be an engineer? I mean, like, yeah, I did. <laughs> So I decided, though, you know, what I've gotten, maybe this is just because it's me, uh, I've got a lot of things like the coffee at a party or whatever, and you have fun. And what do we do with fun and engineer? Oh, man. I, you're not that nerdy. Why? Why would I do that? That doesn't make sense to me. So we're perceived as being nerdy, and if you Google nerd, <laughs> you come up with the rest of the photos on here, which just stinks, right? But you know what? I mean, I don't know if it's changing. I think students have become much more cool than my day. That is not a picture of me at the bottom right, okay? <laughs> but look, I mean, is it really, do we really have a good perception in terms of the public? Do they perceive us in a positive um, way? Or are we just perceived as geeks? If you like math, if you like science, are we just perceived as geeks? I still get it. Do you people get that? I think engineers have become cooler in my, in myself, seriously. I don't know why, but I think they have. But this, this still holds, and older people tend to perceive this, this way. When you start working across disciplines, they're like, you're an engineer, what? You know? So it's kind of interesting. So why would I bring up all that? Well, you're gonna find out, actually, that this issue of perception of you will matter, because it is a little unusual to be a humanitarian engineer. That putting those two terms together is unusual. And I think it'll be a long time before it becomes normal. It's like, okay, I know what that means, like electrical engineer, civil engineer. It is a weird concept. So the question is, though, that somebody might ask then is, is well, wait a minute, you're going to go help poor people. You're going to help with development, human development. What? But is there a role for engineers in helping and poverty in the world? And what this a lot of what this class is about is the answer is a big fat yes. I mean, you think about it, um, you know, problems that are coincident with poverty or things like um, dirty water. Can 
contaminated in many ways. Um, poor sanitation, um, poor access to food, things like chemical engineering. Um, you know, jobs, of course. Um, and energy, not having electricity, and probably not multiplying the energy we have. So every discipline in engineering has a stake here, right? I don't think there's any, every discipline in engineering can do something to help. I think that traditionally, civil engineers have done more um, because they tend to work on the basic issues, um, you know, like laying pipe to water or, you know, on sanitation. No, no other discipline in engineering, perhaps, well, I count environmental, I count part of civil, uh, really does sanitation. Um, but the other, you have the civil engineers, which I think you probably out, raise your hand if you're civil engineering. Yeah, I think you people outnumber the, rep, uh, the other disciplines, okay? Uh, but you, you have to realize there's a lot of other things that the other disciplines can do. Everybody has a role, and we're gonna be talking about that a lot. Then there's this weird thing, if you're gonna be good in this field, um, it, it's really nice if you have social skills. Now that's a problem in the context of these, some of these people at least, right? Um, so you, you know, there tends to be this thing where somehow if you're really into science and technical math, you can't talk to other people and socialize and party. What is that? That's just not true. I just don't think that's true. I mean, the way I did in college, it was the engineers were known as work hard and play hard, which meant party hard. Okay, I mean, really, that's the way it was. But there is something to what they're saying because I've met a number of actually good friends who really are lacking in social skills. Now, not every humanitarian engineer has to have great social skills in working, for instance, with the community, but a good number of them really ought to, okay? And uh, we're gonna talk about the importance of social skills in working with the community um, later on in, in class. Now, uh, the textbook, um, so this is the photo I shot of this little girl. I feel, you know, you feel a little uncomfortable putting a photo like that on a cover of a book. But uh, I thought it was rather symbolic. I, I, I shot that in Honduras in 2005. And uh, um, you see the title of the book. Um, so this is edition two. Um, the, the version, it's draft, I put it at the website. Like I said, it's almost complete, okay? Um, but uh, it, it's not quite there. It's all one file, it's 16 megabytes, um, you know, you shouldn't have any trouble um, downloading it. It's free. Um, as you're going through the book, I am quite confident you're going to run into typos, okay? And uh, bad links. Oh, you know, this link problem. Everybody's always moving their links. This book is a little unusual because it's an e-book. Uh, please don't print the thing out, okay? Uh, it's an e-book. Now, the th there's real advantage of e-books because I can put links in there and everything is in blue click it and you'll go to your browser and you'll be at the World Bank or the United Nations or wherever, okay? If anything is in red, you click it, it'll take you to another location in the document. Section five, figure one, equation three, boom, 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 boom. Then what you gotta learn how to do is so you're, gonna, you're gonna be jumping around internet back here, you're gonna jump to YouTube, you're gonna jump to TED Talks, all this stuff. You gotta know how to get back, get back. It's not hard to get back, Fine, everything's um, you know working real good there. 
Uh, if you want more details on how to navigate um, the ebook, um, there's a section in the preface which you're going to read. Okay, and uh, it'll it'll explain what I just explained um, and um, in more detail. Okay, <coughs> if I uh, so I certainly again I just want to emphasize I'd welcome your uh, comments on the book and you know requests for clarifications anything like that because I'm going to put them in and I'm going to improve it. I don't think there's any way to write a book. This is not a standard engineering textbook. I've written six of them. This is very different. I need other people's help because the subjects here are very, very broad. Okay. Um, in particular, um, let's talk about that. So the way this uh, class is organized is around the book. And the way the book is organized, we start out in chapter one. We're going to talk about poverty. We're going to talk about poverty up close and from a distance. So I'm going to use that theme throughout the book. Up close means we're going to pick Guatemala. We're going to study poverty there. Then we're going to go to the UN and we're going to look at big picture poverty around the world. Okay. We're going to talk about sustainability environment. We're going to talk about culture, which is always lots of fun to talk about. Um, then we're going to go to chapter two and talk about social justice. Um, and we're going to talk about religious perspectives on social justice and secular perspectives. Okay. I understand it's unusual to talk about religion at OSU. I understand it's unusual to talk about religion in engineering, but it matters here, okay? I'm not trying to propose that you follow one religion. Far from that. I'm just saying, if you're gonna work in a country, you have to know something about their religion. If I go to India, I gotta know something about Hinduism, right? And et cetera, et cetera, okay? So you uh, will do that, and then we'll, do, we'll spend actually a bit more time on uh, the secular perspectives. Um, and uh, we'll do engineering ethics. Now, these both feed into development strategies. We'll talk about development experts. Um, five, development economist perspectives. Uh, it's Jeffrey Sachs, who used to work for, with the UN, advised um, Ban Ki-moon. And uh, William Easterly, who used to work at the World Bank. Um, Paul Collier, um, Benergy and Duffo, doing uh, what they call poor economics, which is a fantastic book. Then we're going to talk about health, public health, global health. Then we're going to talk about international education. And uh, um, then we're going to talk about social business. So there's a lot of ideas here that are kind of unusual when you first hear them. So let me give you a sample. So social business says, the way we're going to help people get out of poverty is we're going to make lots of money off of them. We're going to make money, lots of money, pop, profit. Okay? So that's the perspective of social business. Of course, they're trying to have social impact, too. That's why it's called social business. So we'll, uh, we'll evaluate that and discuss it. And all of this is feeding into chapter four, which is engineering for community development. So the idea here is I'm going to look at the special case. I'm going to look at the case where you or a group of uh, you and a group of engineers go to a, a small community um, and try to do some engineering work to help them. And how do you approach that situation? Okay. Um, and uh, like I said, everything will feed into that. Now, this is uh, a course that's highly multidisciplinary. Uh, as I mentioned, we'll be doing development economics. Um, we'll be doing um, social work um, from a couple different perspectives. Uh, we're going to do some business, as I just mentioned. We're going to do religion. We're going to do philosophy. We're going to do ethics, environment, and we're going to do engineering. Okay. Now the challenge with doing engineering here is how in the world can I teach engineering to civil engineers, which I know nothing about civil engineering. How can I, in the world can I teach to chemical engineers? How can I teach? I'm an electrical engineer by, by background. So if you, so when I first was presented with the challenge of doing this and making this a technical course, rather than a general education course, okay, I thought, well, what's the common basis for engineering? First of all, I can rely on you having copies. I'm not going to rely on you having differential equations, though, because you could be a freshman, but you're, nobody here is a freshman. So you're a freshman. We have one freshman. Okay? Two freshmen. How many freshmen? Wait, raise your hand if you're a freshman. You people are more than welcome. This is very doable. All you need is copies. Right? Seriously. Um, and uh, so the, um, I don't know why Carmen didn't, because Buck Island didn't call me that. I, don't, I didn't have any freshmen in the Oh, okay. So, so the um, calculus is, is one thing, 
But what are we going to do? Sit around and do integrals, try to help poor people? <laughs> <laughs> so no, the, what we're going to do is we're going to do probabilistic stuff. We're going to do math labs. We're going to do algorithms. Right? Now, that's going to scare about half the people off. Um, but no, come on now. You, I'm going to do a tutorial on this. This is going to be easy. I am not going to require you, in, in most cases, I'm not going to require you to make up your own code. Write your, you're never going to write like program. You're going to modify my program. It's all posted on the web right now. You're going to modify my sealant diagram. A little bit, but not a lot. And you're basically working on giving you. That's going to be a soft introduction to sealant. And it's allow us to do something that a lot of people in the development community, development economists, other engineers, recognize as important, as important and that is real world dynamics. I mean, if you think about it, if you're helping a group of people, it's a highly dynamic situation. You're kidding me. Very complex dynamic. Uncertain situation. You have to have a way um, to approach that as an engineer. Right? You're not going to be good at your social skills. Well, why try to teach you the simulation of the community? And I'm not kidding. Okay? And help you understand. And actually, guess what? Social work is a real interesting bad idea. I'm working on one right now. So, this is an unusual approach because we're going to be combining in one class things you know, that are usually what we call touchy feely, okay? Social work. Um, with, you know, you know, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, you're gonna see an integral, you're gonna see a derivative, okay? But look, I mean, there's no reason we can't do that. It's very doable. We did it last year, taking the same approach last year, and uh, the freshman in the class, we only had one freshman last year, she got an A, okay? This is very, very doable. Right, so that's the only, I know of no other common technical basis we can operate under uh, in a course like this, besides computation and calculus. Okay. Now, I am going to slip in a differential equation, but I don't need you to know all the theory of differential equations. All I need you to understand is x dot equals, well, that's just a derivative. That's what I wanted. That's a derivative. Right, that was a lot. But it's just a derivative, right? So. You, we will have a few differential equations, but I'll sh explain it in gory detail. Okay? Any questions about organization? Okay. Um, next. Now, that first line, I know most people, engineers, scoff at that. Yeah, right. I'm going to read a book, man. I'm only going to read a book to, to solve the homework problem. See, I've never seen it yet. So I'm trying to assign homework problems to make sure you have to read. Okay, so just, just read the book. I think you're gonna, I think it's, it's, a, it's an unusual book in a lot of ways for an engineer. Um, but everything that's in there is relevant to engineering, to humanitarian engineering, including all the religion, okay, and including the social work. You're gonna see that actually it's highly relevant. Okay, not just because Kevin says so, but because a lot of other experts say so. I mean, you, you read the top development experts in the world, they all talk about social justice, okay? You, you, you talk to even business people, they'll say social justice is crucial. You know? I mean, go over, to, go over to Stillman Hall, where college social work is. Look at their wall. Like, it's painted on their wall. Social justice. These things matter. Okay? They matter a lot because they matter to people. All right. Um, now, in the ideal situation, of course, you would actually read the material before class. Now, I'm not going to tell you what to read. You're, there's people who can figure out what to read, but um, that would be great. I, I want you to participate. I, I want you to interrupt me. I want you to ask questions, say you disagree. Let's get in a fight and go out in the hall and battle. I mean, no, I want, I want an engagement because I think it's important. You, you sh if you have doubts about something, well, bring it up. And I, I'd like to see you converse amongst yourselves too. These are very complicated topics. That's what's amazing about it. It's very complicated because you're bringing in you know, the economics of social work and the simulations, all this stuff together, okay? And so this is gonna require you to think different. It's like trying to think about, how you have this huge engineering system and you think, it, then you get your GE courses. It's like integrating that, okay? It's just, it creates a hypersynthesis. Okay, so, um, homeworks. Now, on the homeworks, um, homeworks one and two are assigned right now. Homework one's assigned today, it's due, I forget, February 2nd, whatever, it's on the web. So you always go to the web, find out which homework to assign. Their key to the book, problem 1.1, is X 
And um, the, uh, I don't know the numbers of homework, so please don't ask, but it depends on um, how big each one is. I know how many homework, I know what I'm gonna assign, I just don't know how I'm gonna break it up yet. And I'll, I'll weight the home, right now in Carmen, it, they're weighted equally, okay? They're weighted equally, but at the end I'm gonna say, ah, oh, this is harder, this is easier, this is more important. I'll shift the weights and then I'll assign homework grades. Half the grade, half your grades, your homeworks. You're encouraged to work together on homeworks. You are not encouraged, please, do not submit the same solutions. Type your own solutions in, talk to each other, and then type your own solutions in. You submit to Carmen, Carmen does this amazing thing, it's all the submissions, compares them to each other, and compares them to everything on the internet. If it overlaps too much, we go to academic misconduct. Okay, so please don't do that. But, uh, you're gonna see, I'm gonna be signing videos to watch and, and summarize and evaluate. Those videos like TED Talks or whatever might be, whatever, 10, 20 minute talk. I think it's great to sit down with someone else and watch it. I mean, these are great. I am not giving you crappy talks. I'm, I'm going through a lot of videos, picking the best talks, watch these talks, and students last year love the talks, actually. And I think it's great if you watch them with someone else, discuss them, and then just write up your own answers, okay? Um, it'll be more fun, it'll be easier, and it, it, it encourages some collaboration. Okay, <laughs> projects. Okay, so there's gonna be two design reviews. Design review one, midterm. Design review two, final, okay? Um, I assigned the teams um, yesterday and posted the teams along with emails from everyone in the class, and I knew this was gonna be screwed up because we already have another person added today, and two more, I just got emails are adding probably tomorrow. So I'm gonna shift it a little bit, okay, once I get everybody settled in and find out who's all really in class, but I have an initialization on um, the team definitions. Roughly 10 or 11 people per team, five teams. I know that's a large team. The reason I picked that is because that's typical size that goes on these trips to Converse or Africa or whatever, okay? Um, your project objective is to design and implement, um, does, let me just say, design an appropriate technology, I'll, that's defined in gore, gory detail in the book, or something for STEM education, some technology for STEM education, and you gotta do one of two things. You either build the thing, okay, physically build it, or you um, simulate it, one of the two. I have balanced the teams, the number of graduate students is spread across the teams, okay? So you're gonna have people that have a fair amount of simulation experience already on your team, probably, in most cases. Um, you get to pick this, but I gotta approve it. Okay, um, and uh, I put some ideas at the website for what some possible things. So it, all that <laughs> um, gory detail is, is at the, the course website, okay? Um, and in fact, there's a document there, uh, probably seven pages long, that explains all the detail, all of our policies, what the design review, how to split up your team, assign tasks, member, one person's gonna investigate the impact of culture on the technology, one is gonna investigate economics, one's gonna brainstorm, one's gonna study the effect on the environment, blah, 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 blah. We have 11 tasks, and you'll do that, you'll decide who. Uh, what I need you to do is pick a leader. You need a leader, that leader is not gonna have that many responsibilities unless you have all the all the um, But uh, they have to be appointed, I need appointed and you need to pick a communication strategy. Now, you might say, I'm gonna give you all emails of everybody else, so you can kind of remember, but if you say, yeah, what is it? Uh, emails are okay, I'm not using email. We're gonna use, we're gonna set up a Facebook site and communicate with everybody, how do we do it? You decide how you wanna communicate. I wanna know how you agree on communicating, so by Friday, and the team leader by Friday, okay? And this is a good way your team is gonna start getting involved. Your team should use Doodle, or Doodle is, Doodle is, Doodle, Set up a schedule, meet once a week. I really recommend you do that. You, you, it's not gonna work well if you do that. Um, meet face to face. I mean, none of the electronic communication methods are, are sufficient, except for perhaps Vine. Yes, I want Vine. Um, I don't like Vine that much. I don't, you know, my son uses it all the time, but it's weird. Um, okay, so you, all this detail is spelled out at 
at the course website. Um, and uh, any questions before I, I'm gonna talk about grading in a second here, all the details. Questions? Okay, um, all right, let's do a little math. That's the equation for grading, okay? Now this is this equation, I'll pick it apart, all right? Um, it's, it's quite easy in the end. So here's your homework for your grade for all your homeworks as defined uh, uh, via the weighting strategy or whatever. Say you have a 92 average on your homework, okay? Because we know 0.92, half your grade's your homework. That's the first term, okay? And then there's this second term. Okay, so this is your midterm project, GMT, uh, GMP, on uh, one quarter of your grade is your midterm project. Okay. Now there's some unusual stuff in this, this uh, bracket here that requires some explanation. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've ever been graded this way, but so this one's easy. You I you submit five reports. Okay. I get one report from each group. You get a group grade. Everybody gets the same grade, period, on that group grade. Okay? That is one half of the one quarter. Okay? So that's that's the group. There's a problem with that because we all know in engineering, at least in my day, there was always the tail coder. You know, the, the person, that, you know, you would be fucking butt and doing all the work and somebody else is not just skating. Okay? So there's, there's a real problem with how do you solve that problem? Okay, there's no easy solution I know. But here's here's a strategy, it's called cooperative learning. Um, there's books written on this stuff. So you want to make your grade. Half of your grade on your midterm project depend on the minimum grade of your design review. Everybody does an individual part of the project? Everybody gets graded? Guess what? The minimum person sets the grade for everybody in the group. Ew, that's nasty, isn't it? Think about it, it's really nasty. So if someone isn't serious <coughs> about the project and they screw up and get a zero, everybody gets a zero, this number becomes zero. Ouch. Now, that sounds highly unfair. Okay, let, let me add a few things. Number one, anybody can redo and resubmit at no penalty. Period. And they can redo and submit up to a certain deadline, but plenty of time to make this number go up. In other words, everybody with a low grade can just redo it and submit it. I don't care if you submit it more than once. We're going to grade it, we're going to help you improve it. And everybody goes up. You say, well, what if they're stubborn and they don't go up? They're going to hurt me. Well, here's the thing. It's in the group's best interest to pull the grades up, right? Because if you pull the grades up, everybody's grade goes up. Now, in this thing, there's a, there's a little secret here. That everybody, there's one person in the room that's on everybody's team. You're only on one team. It's me. I will help you get the grade, without a question. I'll do everything I can to help you. Okay. I would prefer it to be your teammates. Your teammates should be helping. Okay? But I have to say that because look, I'm not allowed to give your grades to each other. It's, it's against federal law. I can't do that. I would like it if your group could figure that problem out. I would like it if you if you get a, a, a 90 on your, your assignment, it, it, you know, you say to the group, look, I got a 90. Um, anybody know what I should do here? Okay? Just be honest. But if you're not willing to do that, well, come to me and I'll help you raise it, okay? But one way or another, we're gonna raise the grades. I want this number to be 100. I want this to be one, right? I want this to get everyone to do well on this. And I think it's feasible. It is, this exact strategy is what's called cooperative learning. Because what it is, it, the idea is, is that I'm grading individual performance and I'm grading group performance and there's a notion called positive interdependence. That means that everybody tries to help everybody else out in there, okay? No, I, you know, I put a lot of thought into this and I, I, this is the first time I've graded like, exactly like this. But look, this group has a high, I would guess, has a high tendency to help each other. Why would you be in humanitarian engineering if you didn't? Now, I would welcome anyone to drop the class right now if they don't like this, because, I mean, if you are gonna mess with your group and screw them up, 
the responsible thing to do is change those audits, okay? But look, I mean, we all, this is, in, I think this is important enough that, that I think it's really gonna work because my experience of working with students, they want each other to succeed, really. You know, it's not, it's not as cutthroat as it seems, I mean, right? And, and uh, especially with this group, uh, especially since I'm gonna jump in and help too, you, you won't feel like you're being treated unfairly. I will add one thing. If there is a highly unusual situation, okay, I'm gonna fix it, one way or another, okay? You're not, you know, it, it, you understand what I'm saying. I mean, sometimes there can be a student with a very bad attitude or a health problem or a, boyfriend problem, a girlfriend problem, I don't know what, and makes this a zero for everybody. I wanna hear about it from a leader, okay? We're not gonna let that happen. That's not gonna happen. If you have that kind of issue, please come see me so that we can treat everybody, treat your, your classmates fairly. This'll, this'll work very good. So, this is the unusual term, the min, okay? Uh, this, guess what? You see the same pattern? It's the same thing. Midterm and final, same thing. Okay? So conceptually, after you get understand this this min term, it's easy. Okay. Um question, promise. Yes. You're not gonna do like a, a curve nope. of that grade effort. Right? No, in fact, um, in the document that's at the web, if if this this number will be converted um, to um, the OSU standard grading scheme. I don't, I would love ever we got an A in this class. I, that's, I'm not gonna curve like some engineering classes do. I think that's absurd. Uh, it's right straight scale. Okay. Um, other questions or comments? I mean, the other thing is I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to make a point. If you're gonna go to Honduras, you had better be working together and you better be helping each other and you better be willing to say that you need help. I mean, so it really fits this field, okay? Um, I had it. Oh, there's one other modification. One other modification. Any questions before I add the last modification? Competitive component. There's a competitive component too between the teams. I had a psychologist friend who's a psychologist suggest this one. Five groups, midterm grade on this grade. No, on. Uh, on this grade, the whole grade, the team with the maximum grade automatically gets 100%, period. I don't care if they let you have it. Automatically get 100%. Why? So if the grades are looking like this, they're all over it, the max team goes boom. So everybody wants to be the max. Because you get the big bonus, big reward. That's competition. What that should do, the theory of cooperation says that should induce cooperation actually. Competition is known to induce cooperation. That's what happens with businesses, right? You know, you got a business fighting against a business, so people in the businesses cooperate with each other so that they can compete and win. So this idea, five teams, you're all competing against each other. You don't want to help your other teams out at all. Forget them, right? In fact, what you should do in the final uh, exam, it's gonna be interesting. Um, the final exam, oral, Final exam period, each team, one person from the team, elected by the team, is given grading notes. And everybody else has a cut. Because I know Eric, he's going to be back to the other team. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Beat him up. You try to make yourself look good. That's the way the dog eat dog world works. I mean, it'll be an interesting dynamic. Uh, that is not a new idea. Yeah. I had a uh, professor do that to my uh, undergraduate class. And, uh, he was always, he told me, he told us, he said, look, I am so upset. You people, you know, you don't, you're too nice to each other. <laughs> you don't compete. You don't, you know, he was trying to get us to, I don't, I don't think it's going to work. I think you're all going to be Okay. So, but that's just a little wrinkle because if you're getting a 95, it's five points you care. That's what, what? Okay. Now, um, there's going to be a tendency on uh, these design reviews to grade tough because we want you to improve 
this piece of your grade, and we want you to talk to others and get help. Okay? All right, so this is it. So you see, there, it's actually a pretty complex grading scheme, considering this is a, you know, um, a positive interdependence. I don't know what to call it. it, it it's rewarding you for helping others and rewarding you for seeking help from others. And the competition is inducing cooperation. That's, but it's got a significant independent component. The homework is used to set context for your project. It's, it's all the outside stuff that your project's essentially embedded in. Okay? Sound good? All right. I have a quick question. Yes. Um, in terms of the individual grades, you can um, redo it as many times as you need to. Is that specifically for the individual grade, or is that for like any other component of the course as well? It's it's only for um, this guy right here okay. and this guy right here. But it's I had to put a deadline to it. I couldn't let you do it at the end, you know. After no, there's yeah. a, there's a deadline on. I don't care if you redo it three times. I don't I don't care about that. I just you got to do it by a certain time. Um, and there's a late penalty on homework. So I gotta get those in to be able to get them graded. Okay, so uh, any other uh, questions, comments? Okay. Um, so before, during, or after class, I would encourage questions or to others, you can ask them. Uh, I'll take a text or an email at any time. Um, I kind of prefer the email, um, but if it's brief, you want to text me, I don't care. Um, I, I, I'm on a Vine, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. I'm plugged in, but I, students don't want to do that. I don't know why they won't let me do it. <laughs> in their communication networks, last year I tried to talk to class into following me on Twitter, just as an example. I think I got three. It's, it's the same way, I can't, whatever. So, but um, these two modes are, are fine. Office hours, um, I'm, my door is open all, uh, quite a bit. Sometimes, I'm not always there, I got a lot of meetings and stuff. Um, please um, set appointments, see me after class, whatever. Plus, Fridays after class, we're gonna do two things, depending on what people wanna do. It's optional. Uh, question, answer, debate session, okay? Sometimes the, we, will, we may pick a debate topic that's a little too sensitive for a big group. Um, I'm happy to do that. And uh, we did that some last year. And uh, question and answer, we could you know, do some simulations or whatever. Um, but after that, um, happy hour at Varsity Club, corner lane and prom. Um, and you know, it's up to you if you want to go. Um, usually it's the only problem with it is it's cold. It's as cold as sweat. And uh, for something like that. Um, so I would certainly uh, welcome you to come. Usually the way this goes is this lasts less than an hour, question and answer, sometimes even a half hour, and then go over there. So let's see, we ended about four. You know, we usually end at four, five. You know, we're usually leaving there at six, six thirty, six thirty, leave the varsity club. It doesn't go late. I mean, you know, we're not going out and not gonna go out and party with me or something, <laughs> except for tonight. Tonight, right? <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, next class. Last slide. Uh, we're gonna view a movie in here next time called Living on One Dollar. Uh, I think some of you have already seen it, but um, this is really a fantastic movie. It's 56 minutes long. I will be starting promptly on time and uh, getting the movie going. It's um, uh, a place in Panaha, uh, uh, near Panahachel at Lake Atitlan in uh, west of Guatemala City. Um, you're gonna hear me use ideas from this movie um, through a number of classes. It's, it's, it's very useful. Please take notes. There's gonna be a homework problem on the movie, the first homework problem. And all it's gonna say is, summarize what was in the movie. And it's like this, okay? So it's, it's just take some notes and, and you'll be set. I think you'll really enjoy um, this movie. If you've already seen a movie, of course, you don't have to come, um, but be ready to create the notes anyway. All right, any questions, you can stay after and ask. All right, thanks, have a good one, bye-bye.